So, dimension F to present you what is the dimension and what our what is our strategy, our goals, and then we will have a, a discussion with some of you. So let's start. So Dailymotion is a global video distribution platform. What does it mean? Um, it's uh, basically uh, it's a software, what we call a, a video player. Uh, a video player which uh, helps content creators, I would say right holders, to connect with uh, internet users and of course advertisers across uh, the world. Our business model, uh, I will talk about it uh, later, but our business is really about financially maximizing the connection uh, between these three stakeholders, end users, content creators, right owners, right owners, and advertisers and their um, and media buyers and so on, I will say the, the, the advertising world. So, as you notice the, the, the yellow ribbon, this is the, the video player, that's our added value to the internet world. We were able, uh, I would say seven years ago, uh, in France and in the, the US, uh, the two territories where broadband was uh, available. When you have broadband, you need specific content. And at, uh, when you go back to 2006 or 2007, <coughs> or, uh, there was no a real specific content dedicated to uh, broadband users. So there was a need of something uh, really new. And video in 2006 was new on the internet. Uh, you seem to be young guys, and maybe it's a long time ago for you and you may be, uh, you may not, not remember how was the internet at the beginning of the, 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 the 21st century, but uh, you could exchange some pictures, you could have access to some text, but no videos were available, especially because of the lack of uh, speed uh, in terms of uh, internet access. So the, the, the broadband launch in some countries like uh, the US and France uh, gave the idea to, to guys to develop this uh, software enabling anybody to upload their own video and to share the video uh, with uh, their friends, but uh, with the, the, the whole world as well. Uh, it's one of um, the, 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 the idea of uh, what was called a couple of years ago, the internet, uh, the second way of internet, the first way was only messages uh, given by some um, uh, I would say uh, industry to the public and the second stage of the internet <coughs> was the, the ability for everybody to exchange, to share, uh, to uh, comment any content uh, besides I would say the, the professional one. That's uh, really, the, that was a, a new idea and uh, the video platforms, uh, you know, of course, uh, YouTube uh, uh, owned by Google, was um, YouTube was launched at the same moment of the motion in 2005, 2006. And uh, um, step by step, the, these two platforms with different uh, shareholders um, tried to become available all over the world for uh, any uh, internet users. 
So, uh, let's go back to the slide. Three different, I would say, clients for uh, daily motion. Of course, the end user, because uh, the end user um, is the, um, the one who takes the decisions, the one who makes the, the bus, and the one who makes the, the, the site, the platform uh, viral and uh, successful. So the, the first target should be, and we try to, 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 <coughs> to handle it as the real target, the final <coughs> target, the end user. Besides the end users, the content creator is uh, definitely key as he, it provides the contents that the internet users need and the third actor, the one who pays <coughs> for everything, the one who finance the development of the service will be is the advertiser. So there is a kind of, of a circle between these three stakeholders and everything is linked to this yellow ribbon, the video player. So as uh, you hopefully you understood, everything is about helping the creative world, the content creators, the right holders, the content owners, the culture industry, the entertainment industry, the media industry, the sport industry, to distribute and monetize their work to new environments, new a couple of years ago, and until now, as there is still some difficulties for our society's old economy, to understand and to really um, treat internet as a key tool to get more money and to better distribute the, the content. So one of our uh, role is to <coughs> better explain how we can help these content creators to discover this new world. It may be weird for you to, to hear me saying that's a new world in 2015, but most of these uh, actors of this, once again, there is no criticism uh, of this whole industry, uh, still have the same um, mechanism of um, monetizing their product, their content, their work, and it's difficult for them to change the way they have dealt with it for years. So, once again, uh, our first role, our first, uh, our first target, in a sense, is to better explain, as I tried to do this morning, better explain our, uh, our um, the way we have developed our platform better explain how we can help. Help is a key word for us. So the, the sentence uh, in yellow is one we, we use and we, we hear very often. Uh, people in front of, uh, of us, I mean, I mean this content industry, they want something simple uh, because, uh, once again, it's not an, um, an environment that they really know uh, well. They want something simple. They want users because uh, finally they start to understand that their own platforms, their own sites are not uh, destination platforms, that people um, have, don't, don't have the idea to go directly, I don't know, on the, on the Turner uh, video site or on the, I would say, I don't know, Arte uh, video site. They need platforms like us to bring them users 
And at the end of the day, the real difference is made by the money we're able to, to bring to the... Another, um, uh, uh, another simple sentence we have to deal with is the one uh, written in blue here. Uh, the, the advertisers, same uh, ID than the <coughs> one for the, for the media industry, <coughs> the entertainment industry, the culture industry. Um, the video, the internet is not, um, for most of them, is not their, uh, the world they used to, to grow with and they want something very easy uh, to be provided, they want something simple and the first word we hear in their mouth is make it simple, simplicity is key for them, they don't want to hear stories about algorithm, about um, IP addresses, uh, uh, the way we, we deal with our users, they just want results, they want the most simple things available. So, what is simple <coughs> for them? They want that we put their brand in front of a large targeted audience, of course, and a content which is supposed to provide the best, to, uh, the content that uh, uh, the users are waiting for. So, um, our goal, our strategy, our target is to help these brands to better connect with uh, the users, the audiences, the market audiences, the internet user, and if we can provide, if we can give all the elements to the to the um, to the advertisers, to the brands. Um, the better elements, the, sh the, 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 the most uh, fine-tuned uh, elements for them, they will be happy because they definitely need targeted audiences. But I will explain maybe uh, a bit, uh, in a better way uh, later. So the last element of our uh, circle, the, the internet users. Um, their goal, what they need, what they want, <coughs> is to be surprised. They want something that they haven't seen, haven't watched before on any screens. They want to be surprised, they want to discover, they want to have fun, but they want to learn things as well. Uh, one of our um, difficulties in the past, but now, thanks to guys like you and in the new generation, uh, it's, it's easier now to explain that mm -hmm. on the web, uh, it's not always, it's not only for, I would say, teens, but all people, every people, everybody uh, is able to find what, you, what they are looking for and it's not all, all, only about entertainment, but uh, anything you, you can find, anything you, you are looking for to, I would say, improve uh, your experience to, is available on the web. And our goal, I mean, the, 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 the way we can help is to, uh, try to provide to, to our users with the best content linked to what they are waiting for. Uh, it's really the question of targeting the content and um, giving it to, to the users who is waiting for it. So, once again, and this is the green sentence, uh, 
the, the when we do some uh, you know uh, marketing stuff when we tr talk to our users the sentence the first word we <coughs> we, 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 we we hear is make it simple simplicity is key as a word so we have to make it simple the the, the tool we provide the, the <coughs> platform that uh, that we we rule has to be simple we have to inform and entertain but entertain entertainment once again is not the only element but we have to give good content and we have to help users to discover new things great stuff we said so we have this um, three once again that's not the, 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 the right word but uh, uh, let's make it simple but <laughs> our three clients the content creators the end users and the advertisers they live <coughs> in different worlds there is no specific bridges between them so we have to build these bridges Let's start with the content creators. What is a content creator? They are, there is no, not a specific definition <coughs> that belong the content creators to different worlds. Uh, first, first of all, uh, first, first uh, of them, uh, the first one could be the, the world of creation coming from the web. Uh, independent creators who are, are born on the web, the, the, the new generation, I would say, of creators who are able, thanks to their smartphone, to create new content in different fields uh, information, entertainment, uh, even um, scientific um, purposes everything is possible <coughs> besides I would say these um, internet creators most of them are uh, independent um, they are more uh, more industrial um, content creators what we call today MCN MCN and are, uh, are um, better known through I don't know if you're aware of it, but uh, through an investment of uh, the Disney Channel company of last year um, in a company called uh, Maker Studio uh, and it was the first signal of the entertainment classic industry um, understanding that the creation was um, moving or was uh, uh, w w was uh, starting in a different uh, uh, landscape than before and that uh, creators now w were uh, uh, were, t were took the habit to choose some multi-channel networks MCN, to better uh, virilize uh, their content uh, they don't want to belong to one site they don't want to be seen on one platform they don't want to to be uh, seen as an asset of a company they want to be uh, available uh, everywhere on the web they want to uh, multiply uh, the sources of their revenues and company like uh, Maker Studio, um, B79, Melbury's, uh, and there are a lot of companies uh, which have been launched in the, the last years and the last month are going to multiply uh, the possibility for the end user to have access of this content. So we need to have a relationship. I would say a contractual relationship with um, the different content providers, the independent creators, the multi-channel networks 
but it's easy for them, for us, to work with them because they need us as a platform. They need us to better distribute their content. And must, I would say, the most important um, uh, partner <coughs> for us are the media companies. Media companies is, I would say, generic uh, name. Uh, inside it, uh, there are, of course, the, the main actors of the entertainment industry, but uh, as I uh, said before, the sport industry is key for us and the, 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 the information industry is, um, is uh, one of our best partners in most of uh, our countries. So, we have a contractual relationship with these content creators in order to host their content on our platform and to make this content available for the users. Once the content is available on our platform, what we need to do, what we have to do in order to pay our huge salaries, uh, to pay the bandwidth, uh, to pay all the infrastructure, is to monetize the content uploaded uh, by the media industry and available on the platform. Today, every type of content, every format is available on the web and specifically on the animation. From short form to long form, from on demand, paying on demand content to paying or free live content from ad supported, advertising supported content to pay-per-view or to subscription content, everything is available. The, um, the quality of the image uh, that we provide is linked to the network of the end, u of the end users. I mean, if you have access to a, a huge uh, uh, broadband quality, we are able to provide the best uh, available quality to these users, but we have um, big successes in countries like Pakistan or India, and we are able, because in this country sometimes um, there is still um, an internet access uh, not so efficient. We are. We have to be able to provide the same content in a, in a lower quality. Mm -hmm. But um, just users, they don't care. They don't want to have access to this content. And uh, of course, they would like to have a, a better internet access. The one they want is the content. That's the main difference. I would say one of the difference with the TV world. I mean, uh, our users, they don't care about a blurring image, they don't, want, they don't care about people talking in, in a weird way, they just want content different, they just want a content which surprised them. Um, today, uh, and uh, during the past years, we try to, to focus on short content because uh, people have 10 minutes uh, to waste or to use uh, in front of their laptop uh, on their mobile so we have to be ready to give them the short high quality fresh premium content that they're waiting for or if they are not waiting for it that is going to, to surprise them. And this content will be financed, funded by advertisers. Um, of course, um, the brands are different, are different, and brands uh, wait for, want 
different things coming from us. They want, as I said bef before, targeted audiences, but they want as well different formats. Uh, they want different ways to present the brand, the product, to the public. So we have developed different tools, like uh, the images of branded player, you know, the video play player can be on a white level basis and can be branded with the name of our partner, of our brands, different. And the same way some advertisers, they don't want <coughs> to have a <coughs> campaign running as specific advertising campaign, they prefer to, to sometimes, they choose the way of, you know, advertising, uh, native advertising, like branded channels, in order to better distribute um, their messages about their product. Besides the needs of our of the brands, the, 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 the advertising our advertising partners, our content partners um, have specific needs and different needs. Some of them um, need us as a technology company, and they w and. I, I used the, the Barcelona example, the football club of Barcelona example. They wanted us to give access to an easy to use video player that they could use with their uh, own brand. And they wanted a very uh, simple technology because uh, on their um, inside their company, if you're for football player, you can say company, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have the specific um, technical talents in order to, to develop this kind of uh, uh, tools. So uh, a lot of uh, sports uh, players, uh, clubs in different um, Sports, not only the, the main ones, but uh, uh, especially, I would say, the small sports, the one you don't find easily on television. They understood a couple of years ago that uh, we were a very easy, free way to have access to their fans, uh, and therefore, um, video platform, it's very easy to have access to live games or uh, uh, games uh, on, on a on-demand on basis, free or, or, or paying way, on a free or paying way of, I don't know, water polo, hockey, ice hockey, uh, rink hockey, badminton, uh, volleyball, and things like that. I could use the, the the volleyball example as in chart of, uh, of, uh, of Europe, uh, development of the animation in Europe, and, and volleyball is, is a very specific sport that uh, is uh, it's very, a very European one. And in each country, we, we try to work with the, uh, each European country, we try to, to work with the local federation or professional when, when it exists, uh, league, and we give access um, to live games of the of of, uh, of the competition, the local competition, and we are all, we are always surprised that uh, a, a, a live game of uh, a competition in I don't know in Slovakia or in Spain, in Italy, even in France, there can be 25, 30 thousand people watching it. Uh, when there is maybe 100 people 
watching it live, I mean, uh, in the real life. Um, sports is a good way to share its passion and to share with a community of passionate um, users uh, some specific uh, <coughs> Um, sometimes we need to develop specific tools and once again, first of all, we are a, a technical company. Everything has been built around a video player and around <coughs> this video player, we have to develop the tools that our partners need. It can be, as I said before, some pain tools when our partner don't trust the financement through advertising, but when they want uh, a pain system, we are able to give them access to a pain solution that we develop internally. Same uh, ID, we developed some reporting tools, especially for the multi channel networks, in order for them to uh, give access in, in, on a real time basis to different figures as numbers of video views, um, countries where the video has been viewed, and of course, revenues linked to the videos. Um, I, I talk about bridges that we try to, to build between the different families that are our um, clients, our partners. Uh, one of uh, the, 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 the most uh, difficult uh, bridges that uh, we developed was uh, last year and two years ago uh, when we started to populate the idea of multi-channel network and we had to convince independent creators to join to trust this multi-channel network in order to distribute their content. The best example I can uh, give you, and sorry if uh, it's a French example, but uh, the French versus the US. In France and some other countries, there are you know, young, uh, talented guys uh, who are born on platforms like YouTube and Dailymotion, making a lot of uh, funny stories uh, through videos. Um, these guys call uh, I don't know, Norman, Cyprian, or names like this. Uh, their first goal is to be um, recognized, to be um, asked by television to have their own shows on television. So it happens generally on small uh, local or even national channel. Uh, these um, talents have their own show for let's say one year, 18 months. And then the success vanishes. <coughs> and they have to go back to the web. <coughs> in, the, in the US, it's totally different. When a guy starts to have some success on the web, <coughs> his, own, his only idea is to, to try to have the, the, the different sites to distribute this video in order to, to earn more money, in order to have uh, the, the, the maximum number of views. Never in his mind the world, the world or the, and the world, television 
appears. Uh, the, 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 the ambition uh, is to become more and more popular, to get more money, or to get money, but never to become a, a, a classical success on television. This difference of, uh, I would say, of uh, mindset um, is difficult to explain, but through the development of this multi-channel network, networks, we feel that uh, in other European countries and countries where the digital advertising is growing fast, uh, faster, uh, always faster, um, television will have televisions will have difficulties to attract this uh, new talents. So, as uh, I said, we before uh, we are here to help the creation industry and all the content creator to to have the direct access to all the data helping them to understand how their videos, their content is watched, uh, how the content is uh, commented, how the, the, the users appreciate or not their content. So we give them a lot of um, tools for the analytics, uh, in, a, in a tools for uh, letting them decide the advertising pressure. They can decide the number of um, advertising banners available on their videos. We help them to make their content available to the countries of their choice. It's a very easy way through uh, what uh, we call the, the geo-blocking, through the IP addresses of the end users. So, for instance, um, big companies like, I don't know, what kind of example I could use? Warner Music, for instance, for a new short clip of, uh, of a Warner Music artist, they can decide uh, if they don't want a worldwide launch, they can decide to target one or several different countries through the IP addresses of the internet users. We have um, the possibility to give our partners access of different other tools like the fingerprinting tools. I don't know if you are familiar with uh, this idea of fingerprinting. Fingerprinting is a way to recognize during the, the upload of a video if the uploaded video is a copyrighted uh, video, a protected uh, video belonging to a professional um, right holder. And the right holder, through the fingerprinting, decides if he stops the upload or if he accepts the upload, but the upload, the video uploaded, will um, belong <coughs> to its own channel, although it has been uh, uploaded by, uh, I would say, a classical internet user. So it's different tools, which are not so simple, uh, but uh, make the content industry aware of the huge possibilities offered by uh, the web, um, the video platform, the web uh, industry, because they can have access at the, at the, ex at the exact time of uh, the life of their content, which is a total difference, for instance, with the video uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on television, because on television you have to rely on a specific uh, uh, 
technical uh, studies which give you information about uh, uh, the <coughs> audience which uh, people have difficulties to trust today uh, with the countries where the video have been watched and um, you have on television a treat with intermediaries on the internet once again you have a direct direct access to this information when you are uh, when you are a content <coughs> owner. Besides these tools, uh, besides the, the fact that uh, we stream the content, and on daily motion we have something. I will give you more uh, more figures after we stream something like three billion video every month. Uh, 10% in France, 20% in the US, I would say 50% in the whole, whole Europe, and we have big uh, successes in countries like Turkey, Pakistan, India, Indonesia, in terms of audience, it's different in terms of revenues, so revenue are more linked to the <coughs> to countries where the, the digital advertising market uh, <coughs> is, is, uh, is big. So, besides the technical tools, we help the content owners, the content industry, to build their audience. I gave you the example of the Pan Eurovision TV channel after. Uh, for years, Arte had its own mm, internet site where they were uploading their videos and they had something like 100,000 uh, views each month. The day they understood that they could for free and without advertising, that was their choice, that's something we accept totally. Um, that they could upload their videos on our platform as we are a destination site, as people uh, won't know us and go to Dailymotion and go to YouTube in order to discover new things. Uh, videos on, of Arte were better discovered on Dailymotion and which uh, it's, it's a magic number that uh, it's not uh, very known, but each six visits on a video on a video of art, for instance, on the immersion, one on s uh, of six leads to a visit to the art site. So it's a way to get uh, your own visitor when uh, you have your own site. It's a way to uh, find a new, a new public, a new audience. So these two uh, different ways to uh, improve, to, uh, up, to, to, to accelerate uh, the popularity of, uh, of your content is one of the reasons, of the reasons uh, why we have something like 70,000 uh, content partners who have chosen to upload their videos on our platform. The two other reasons, I would say there are three reasons. The first one is the, the, the the growing audience. The second one is the fact that when you upload a video, a video on a video platform, the the bandwidth is uh, paid by the video platform. Even if the video, if your video, for instance, I will say Warner Music, is exported and embedded on your own site, technically the video remain hosted on the video platform um, 
assets. And uh, the bandwidth is paid by the video platform. So in terms of, uh, of uh, I would say, uh, financial, um, uh, financial uh, decision, uh, it's a good thing for this uh, content industry to know that having this video available on the web uh, is free for them. And the third reason, of course, and we will uh, say a word about it, is the fact that the monetization of the video uh, is shared, I mean the revenues of the monetization, uh, of the monetization is shared uh, with the content owners. When we get uh, 100 I would say, euros because of uh, an advertising campaign, we give for, for, for instance, around um, the, our music channel. And let's imagine that the, 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 the one music, one music video will be 50 percent of the music channel on the emotion. We will give 50% of uh, the of the 100 euro we got. We will give these 50 euros to one music, and we will share with them. So at the end, one music will get 50% of the revenues linked of the monetization of uh, advertising through Warner Music videos. Is it clear? Yes. So, after uh, partners, let's talk about end users. Uh, end users, it's, it's always, uh, once again, uh, useful to fight the idea of uh, saying that um, internet is made for uh, only young people. Uh, young people are, are key because uh, they can uh, lead uh, their family to make some choices. But as you notice here, um, there are uh, more than one quarter of our audience that uh, has more than 45 years. And um, young adults, I would say, are the, uh, represent one other quarter. Um, we have something around September, uh, the, the last figures around the 15, uh, September uh, last year, but at the end of this year, I would say that uh, we had 160 million Sorry. Yeah. Uh, how do you get access to these demographics? Yeah. Comscore. Uh, Comscore, if Comscore makes, uh, Comscore is uh, the leading uh, um, internet institute, and uh, we have access to, to, to a lot of uh, data through Comscore. But uh, in each uh, um, in each key market for us, <coughs> we try to do some. Uh, marketing focus and have an interactive uh, relationship with our, our user in order to better understand uh, who they are and what they are waiting for. So uh, this is internal plus Comscore uh, figures. In terms of audience, so uh, I would say January, yeah, this month, January 15, we have around 160 monthly unique visitors, that means people visiting the emotion. No, not, not this, uh, sorry. We have 130 people visiting the platform, but 
we have more people, 150 million, so it's more 280 monthly active users. We have 150 million unique people having access to a video through the Dailymotion video player. That means they are not visiting our site, but they have access to our content. And more interesting for us, we can monetize this content. We can run ads on these videos, even if they are not available on the site. We can monetize videos through the video players. So, the idea of this is to say that we have more audience on, our, on the player directly outside the platform than players, uh, than uh, viewers, sorry, than users on the site. Uh, sorry, I didn't understand the outside. The difference. Yes. So, for instance, let's <coughs> use the Warner Music example. Okay. Warner Music has different possibilities to make their content available. Of course, what we ask them is to upload their videos on Dailymotion. But besides this, they can make their videos available on their site and on third party sites. I mean, fans of you know, uh, urban music they can uh, have their own blog and some personal pages with some Warner Music videos. And on these blogs or on Warner Music, the advertising <coughs> monetized is monetized by Dailymotion and we share with Warner Music. So today our audience is bigger and external sites than our on our site. That's a key <coughs> element and the main difference with uh, I would say basic internet uh, actors. When you have access to com score uh, figures in France, and France is almost the only countries on the world on the world where uh, you don't use com score but mediametry, uh, you <coughs> compare uh, the figures, the data, the, the, the numbers between, I uh, would we'll say, for instance, a TV channel like also BBC in the UK. Uh, the you will have access to the, the, the visitors of the BBC site only. YouTube, Dailymotion, you have the visitors on your site, plus all the people who have uh, discovered the content of the partner of the platform elsewhere than on the site. That's really something uh, key and different. Um, where uh, these videos uh, are watched uh, <coughs> first on uh, different um, uh, devices, uh, mobiles and mi mobiles and tablets represent today something like 40% of the usage in countries like Japan or Korea, it's eighty percent for the motion. Um, <coughs> a TV, you know, uh, a connected TVs, IP TVs, uh, we are available on, on, on most uh, uh, connected TVs, but um, the audience is still very low. Uh, the usage is bit difficult to connect. I don't know if you have a, a connected TV, but it's not so easy to connect them. And uh, we didn't um, um, we didn't make um, a lot of effort to develop the connected TVs because 
um, for the advertisers, they have not yet understood that uh, connected TV is is targeting as well uh, TV users than internet users. So uh, today it's very rare to uh, have uh, advertisers wanting to advertise on uh, connected TV. So uh, the market, according to the signals we get from the market, will remain very uh, flat in the coming years. Um, the animation is born in France, but uh, uh, the best idea we, we had uh, when we launched the service was to never consider the animation as being a French uh, company. So um, we opened offices in a lot of countries and we hire people in a lot of countries and we never say, we never feel as being French or European or, you know, from born in Paris. First of all, we are uh, a, a digital company, a technical company, and who cares where our, um, where our, our service, uh, where our service are, are based. So as I told you before, uh, the US is our main market, uh, France remains one of our key markets, but Turkey, India, Japan, of course, and country, uh, growing countries like uh, Brazil, Australia, uh, become uh, more and more uh, successful. Um, I told you that we have something like 70,000 uh, content partners. Uh, Put some examples. Um, it's very broad. Difficult to 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 highlight only uh, some of them. But uh, our, our, our main um, I would say channels uh, are of the news, sport, cinema, gaming, lifestyle. Which is very interesting is that in each country. Uh, we have uh, a different way to principally use the emotion. For instance, in Japan, gaming, <coughs> and especially e-gaming, you know, this, uh, this sport competition are very popular. In Germany, music is a, a must-watch channel on the animation. France, news, uh, is uh, remained the most popular and in countries uh, like the US, the US is uh, especially uh, I would say uh, humor and uh, I would say young male uh, humor if, uh, if you guess uh, what uh, I mean. Um, premium content coming from partner and uh, it's one of uh, the things that uh, are not very known represent only one quarter of the views only or already one quarter of the views of the views uh, video platform uh, i forgot to tell you but it's something so obvious for so obvious for me that uh, I guess that uh, it was obvious for you as well, but uh, uh, video platforms, when they were launched in 2005, 2006, <coughs> they were primarily called UGC platform, user generated content platform. You know, uh, when you want to share uh, what you have done during your holidays, when you want to share some images of your um, the first uh, time your baby is walking, the, I don't know, the, the, the wedding of your uh, beloved daughter, all these, I would say, personal images still represent a huge uh, usage of the video platform. It's not something really um, it's 
essential, I mean, uh, central for us. I mean, video platform will always be used for a UGC content. But in order to, to attract more and more advertisers, we have to seduce them, to convince them with high quality content. A cat on a skateboard uh, may be interesting with an advertiser. Uh, the videos of uh, your holidays on the beach may be interesting, interesting for an advertiser. But for sure, um, a live of a music show of Rihanna for sure will attract and seduce an advertiser. So beside the UGC world, world beside the, 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 the video, the videos uploaded by internet users like you and me, we definitely need uh, premium content. So today they represent only or already 27% of our catalog our library of available uh, videos. We have something like 43 million video available. But more and more uh, video platforms will uh, provide access to premium content. I'll give you some figures if you're, you're interested in, uh, about uh, the different verticals we are providing, uh, the number of active music in different channels, verticals like music, comedy, humor, or uh, um, audience is growing and mobile especially is growing not only because of the devices are more robust not only uh, because of the 4G uh, available in more countries but uh, oh, but one of the reasons is that um, <coughs> our partners understood the fact that people want short content, short quality, high quality content, uh, easy to watch when you are using a, a, a tablet or a mobile. So there are different explanations of this boom of usage of. Uh, of the mobile. Um, I want to help users to have fun, to learn things on the emotion. What we try to do mm -hmm. through different uh, technologies, including cookies, including um, uh, real questions, direct questions uh, uh, to the users. Mm -hmm. We try uh, to enhance the user segmentation. Uh, we try to uh, uh, give access when a user watch uh, football uh, games, uh, for instance, uh, we try to, after he watch one video, to, to make available for uh, this user some other football videos, but it can be more precise when you are a fan of, I don't know, as I am of the Red Star uh, Football Club in France, when you watch videos of Red Star, the uh, first one, we try to, to give access 
to the user who lacks uh, Redstar, to uh, the competitors of Redstar when they lose games. If you understand the, the trick we, we, we try to, 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 to build, we, we want to comply with the direct feelings, the feelings, the immediate feelings of the of the of the users. So uh, these are our uh, tools that we developed internally. Most of them, but we try to 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 partners with uh, the best uh, available technologies. Let's tell you the <coughs> the e-gaming, the e-sport, the the, the gaming. Uh, Example. <coughs> I don't know if you're familiar with it. Once again, there are uh, like, uh, competition, live or not, of uh, different um, games uh, all over the world. Through the emotion, you can have uh, access of uh, game uh, live uh, tournaments, for instance, and you have comments in different languages, so you can have a, a guy from Moldavia uh, playing with uh, a Korean with uh, uh, commentaries in English, Dutch or German or French. Uh, it's very successful, we can have sometimes mm, not far from one million people simultaneously connected on the emotion to watch these events. So it's uh, really uh, an underworld becoming more and more uh, a first class uh, world. And the best uh, uh, example we can give is, uh, is Twitch. Uh, Twitch, which has not uh, more users than us, less than the double, which have been bought by Amazon a couple of months ago for something like one billion uh, dollars. So uh, a lot of actors are interesting of uh, this uh, new area and gaming will become uh, more and more uh, essential on, the, on your internet experience. So we have a lot of uh, uh, of, uh, I would say, passionate people using this daily motion for, uh, uh, for watching um, gaming events. But we decided to launch our own platform dedicated with a specific URLs uh, called daily motion games in order to, to, <coughs> to become definitely uh, uh, one of the biggest uh, e-sport um, platform. Advertisers. Uh, there are different ways on the internet. Uh, <coughs> the area. Uh, there are different ways on the internet uh, in order to monetize uh, advertising. You are familiar with it. Display, you know, the banners, in stream, um, what we call pre roll, mid roll, post roll. Why um, we need premium quality content? Because premium quality content, we can more easily put in stream advertising inside because people want to follow to have access to the whole quality uh, premium content and it's different with the uh, UGC <coughs> content and we sell 10 times uh, on a 10, uh, 10 times more uh, expensive way uh, instrument advertising than a display advertisement. Um, for advertising uh, 
partners for advertiser. We develop other tools like uh, I don't know if you are familiar with real-time bidding. Uh, the advertising market totally changed during the past year on, on, on internet. Uh, it's n you don't have any more, you know, sales uh, teams trying to convince advertisers to um, invest in marketing campaigns on your platforms, on your site. Now, for for you. Yeah, for two years, I will say, uh, uh, advertisers, sites use what we call advertising <coughs> exchanging platform, ad exchange, real time bidding, RTB. It's like you know brokers. Um, you can you give access to an inventory, and uh, there is a, some um, biddings, and uh, it's very easy. For instance, now without having any employees or any partners in countries like uh, Colombia or uh, New Zealand, you can sell in this territory uh, automatically without any intermediaries. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a very easy way and uh, that's the future of the advertising industry. Mm. So we launch our own advertising exchange. Uh, so less intermediaries, direct access to the figures for the advertisers, and um, better uh, tariffs for them. <coughs> um, there are a lot of. Um, uh, advantages for advertising you know, for advertisers to use uh, real-time billings, uh, but uh, you will discover it uh, more deeply if you have uh, the opportunity to read the slides. So uh, to sum it uh, to sum it up, uh, we are on the right path to always uh, develop. Uh, uh, a better, a bigger uh, distribution platform. Our uh, weakness uh, is the fact that uh, we are a small company, we are only 200 employees, but uh, this weakness um, uh, is, uh, is at the same time a, a real advantage because it's very easy for us to develop, to react, um, to uh, to answer to the needs of our partners, and it's a main difference with a, a big, uh, a giant like YouTube, which a subsidiary of uh, of uh, uh, of Google, and where everything is planned for months, year, and everything centralized. In the U.S. headquarters, uh, what we try to do is something really different. Uh, we try to be uh, agile. We try to be uh, to listen to our our three families of um, partners of clients, and therefore um, we are pretty uh, ambitious. But we know, we totally know, and uh, I, I'm ready to answer to any question about it, that we need to better uh, develop our business in terms of investment, in terms of uh, identifying uh, new investors, uh, as you for sure read uh, in the press uh, during the last months. So, what is our future? Uh, the techni technological quality of the platform. Once again, we are a, a, a technical site. I mean, tech technologies is uh, uh, our main uh, uh, ambition. Then we have to get more partner content, more premium quality content. We have to, to provide 
our users with a better service <coughs> through um, personalization, through um, a more universal experience and uh, in addition we have to grow our audience even with let's say 300 uh, monthly active users we are in the top 50 in the world of the of the, the internet actors the 49 others are uh, Chinese or American so we are I don't use the, the, the the French flag for this, but the European flag. We are the only European actors, and uh, I don't, I don't like to be the emotion to be seen as a European actor. But sometimes it's useful to, to in order to explain the the unique point of view of the emotion mm, in the top 50 of the most popular sites, but uh, the only one not being American or, or Chinese. <coughs> Thank you for uh, your attention. Uh, I'm ready to discuss. Hello everyone, our presentation discussion is about the daily motion. It's no, it was really hard to get the information because you don't have too many uh, data and we tried to gather all the information through the internet and through the web pages and articles and etc. Uh, so let us begin. Uh, as we know, Dailymotion is one of the biggest uh, video platforms and it attracts users from all over the world. Um, and uh, with the one, uh, it has um, around one, uh, 120 million unique visitors and 1.5 billion video views per month. And it is the uh, first European site in all categories according to the web score, but it's the, um, it, um, it's 2013. Uh, the results and uh, you can use the daily motion to share your personal videos private <coughs> videos of, um, of your family friends and also um, uh, share with um, to the world and uh, you can make your own creations to the large large panel of people and read the comments made on these videos also you can make the video blog in a few clicks using the blog blog this function add uh, a video to your blog and directly okay also you can do it directly from your web camera. And you can also discover other videos using tags and etc. The main competitors uh, of daily motion are first of all YouTube, Metacafe, Google Videos, Vimeo, Yahoo Video, Brave, Rever. And uh, according to the users, they rated these uh, all video um, sharing web pages and you can see the daily motion is on the fifth place but it has a huge portion in European um, share. So it's in, on the, in the European Union, it's in the first place, but all from the, all, the, all over the world, it's on the fifth place. Uh, so we want to focus on the um, competition between daily motion and YouTube. Uh, first of all, we read to the website statistics. According to the statistics conducted by both companies, YouTube slams down Daily Motion with its 1 billion unique website visitors in a month, and Daily Motion is far off uh, <coughs> with only 112 million <coughs> site visitors. But uh, here comes the video quality and sources. Uh, this is the where Daily Motion and YouTube battle takes a turn. Uh, YouTube, with millions of hours uploaded to the site, have certain limits when it comes uh, to the size because it's very difficult to upload the uh, upload the big videos on YouTube, and there is a limit of one gigabyte. Uh, and where if you upload, uh, if you start to upload uh, mm, big video, large videos on the YouTube, it takes forever <laughs> to upload it. Uh, and there are some kind of differences between YouTube and Daily Motion which is obvious that the interface of daily motion is better and it's sleek. Daily motion maintains the qual uh, video quality better than YouTube and it's really obvious because we asked several uh, friends and students who use the daily motion and all say that uh, quality of daily motion is uh, of course better than YouTube. And daily motion uh, can uh, um, only upload on a 50, um, or 500 kilobytes average speed, and every video is only limited to uh, 20 minutes, or uh, the size should be 150 megabytes. Uh, volume of videos in database. You can see that uh, on YouTube, uh, estimates show that around uh, 72 hours worth of video is being uploaded to the site every minute, 
with YouTube, anybody in the world can watch fresh new videos every time at any time. And daily motion fears far less than that in this area. But daily motion compensates for it. Uh, what daily motion lacks is number, it makes up for the quality. And people say that if you are, uh, if you want to watch a popular video, video uh, minutes after, you should find it on YouTube. But if you want to view it um, with the better picture quality, you should wait until it reaches daily motion. So this is the strong point of the daily motion. And policies of both web pages. Uh, there are some web page policies and restrictions that could affect the number of videos uploaded on both sites. Daily Motion and YouTube follow the guidelines against copyright infringement and other legalities. It is just a matter of which of them enforces them better. And over at YouTube, one is most likely to encounter videos that are copyright protected but are uploaded anyway. So there arises a question, is Google skewing search results in favor of YouTube? Uh, this mm, short answer can be no, but uh, yes, uh, Europe's, uh, Europe's antitrust chief cleared Google in uh, February 2014 of a decade-long antitrust investigation over unfair search practices. But there can be another answer, which is yes, uh, which is uh, why Google has to take certain steps to allow for more competition in its search results. And why similar videos on daily motion and other sites fail in comparison to the traffic gathered uh, on YouTube? Um, maybe search of the uh, search results are a bit skewed, and also Google has uh, been cleared of wrongdoing claims in its school results in their favor. There is no denying that Google search results played a huge role in getting YouTube to where it is today. And there was the case um, of um, one of the YouTubers who posted the video on YouTube and on the daily motion at the same time, and in 24 hours. He got around 500 views on YouTube, and in uh, Daily Motion he got only 10. And then he tried to search his video in um, in Google search. Uh, there was the same title for YouTube and for Daily Motion video. And uh, in the search, he for the first uh, result was a uh, YouTube result, but he but he couldn't find the results from Daily Motion. And this is one of the reasons that we can say that uh, Google uh, search is good. <laughs> Mm. So, uh, I want to focus on the case of <coughs> Yahoo and Daily Motion. Uh, mm, Yahoo wanted to buy the portion of the Daily Motion, but the French Industrial <coughs> Renewal Ministry said that Yahoo wants to do Daily Motion, but we told them no and that it had to be a 50 50 uh, split. And Orange was really close to selling the 70 significant part, share of uh, Daily Motion to Yahoo when the deal uh, fell through. Uh, and the deal would be valued daily motion at uh, five um, at uh, three hundred million uh, dollars, and sale of telecoms um, Orange uh, uh, has complained of state interfer interference after French government ruined its multi-million pound deal with Yahoo. And it is also known uh, that uh, Orange Lager's shareholder is French government, which we owns twenty seven percent of its share. So uh, its opinion is. <laughs> Obvious, and uh, there you know there are some important notes which should be taken into consideration. That Orange first bought a uh, forty-nine percent of stake of Daily Motion in two thousand eleven uh, for almost sixty million euros, and then spent an extra sixty-one million on the rest of the company in January two thousand thirteen. And Orange sells um, hit out that the French government saying Daily Motion is a subsidiary of Orange and not uh, the state. Uh, Yahoo's deal was about 75% of the daily motion <coughs> from the France tele, uh, Telecom, but as I mentioned, they wanted only sell to uh, of 50% of its um, portion. And daily motion now needs to find a solid strategic partner, probably American, American that is capable of opening the doors to the US market. This uh, was taken from one of the interview uh, with Orange spokesperson. And uh, a French Prime Minister mentioned that Daily Motion is one of the rare content companies from France that succeeded in on the web in recent years. So it's a gem for them, and um, uh, it doesn't lose money. It would be a real, uh, real shame to let it go. So this is the opinion from a uh, French Prime Minister. So now Yana will continue about video hosting uh, services. I'll and here. Yes. Okay. Okay. How many meals do I have on the table? Two, three, ten. Okay. <laughs> First, let's go back a little bit and talk about the video hosting service that actually allows individuals to upload videos and share 
uh, all the, then after all these videos, they normally stored on the server, and, uh, <coughs> and then people can just distribute the links and uh, watch these videos. Okay. Uh, Daily Motion was a startup and started started in 2005. I think that one month after YouTube. It's uh, owned by Orange, but the French government has 27% of, uh, of stake. And the business model uh, can be described actually by head of content of Daily Motion, Antoine Azarhead, was described as <coughs> um, first part. Uh, first part that um, advertising is sponsored, it's based on traffic, which generates uh, advertising revenues. And then what already was mentioned, these revenues are equally shared between platform and official content provider. Next. Uh, then it's based on exclusive content. Users are charged a premium for ad free content and they have access to video on demand. That's kind of the same as on Spotify and a lot of streaming services. In, um, in normally this business model called freemium, so it's like a combination of free access and if you want you can pay. And also Dailymotion has some B2B model that allows some third party to, um, uh, play, to put their content, like for example French television on Dailymotion, if I'm not wrong. Okay. Uh, that we, because we are studying, a lot of us has cultural industries class, so we were studying a lot about record labels, about streaming platforms, and now we discovered, at least I discovered this new player, it's a multi-channel network, it's a huge player, they are generated a lot of revenues, they are really powerful, what they are doing, they are kind of intermediately, so they are um, helping uh, like they are kind of a link between advertising companies and the streaming platforms uh, to get to get revenues and what they're doing they are responsible for uh, for example digital right management for um, monetizing for programming for um, all other side uh, um, business <coughs> for example the last deal that i think was also mentioned it will disney uh, it bought make studio for 500 million that actually this deal makes Disney a major online video distributor uh, that's uh, what I found uh, beside the daily motion that for me it would be interesting to discuss it's video on demand now we are knowing that since the digitization uh, penetration of the internet uh, complete the materialization of a lot of uh, products that we can now just stream online. Uh, it leads to the growth of video on, uh, online streaming. So, for example, Cisco and network company reckon nearly one million minutes of video will cross the internet every second by 2018. What we can what we can say about this that actually uh, by 2018. Uh, it's likely to account from 80 to 90 percent of global consumer internet traffic. So here, this is uh, we can raise debate about um, sustainability, reliability of content delivery, and of course about uh, network net neutrality. Because as soon as uh, uh, you have problem with content delivery, you can have a kind of agreement with internet service providers to discriminate and put uh, higher prices. So what can be an answer, which technology can be invented, because there, since the race of um, um, streaming of video, this is a really huge uh, bargain for uh, internet service providers that they have to deal with. Uh, this was very shocking for me, honestly. Because now it's that what also mentioned this live electronic sport is growing and for example uh, Dota I never played but I was surprised because the last the international they have international competition tournament and the price is 11 million dollar and last time it was watched by 20 million viewers uh, on this Twitch channel and. Uh, 
Mm, this is how actually the event looked like. There were present 10,000 uh, uh, visitors, and this is a huge growing business. That's why Amazon bought this Twitch for almost $1 billion. And uh, there was also, I cited uh, that Mr. De Martino was stunned by the, the amount of people who walked to watch this game. I was also shocked <coughs> that people are doing this. Uh, Yes, another case maybe like after that what we found on the uh, Wall Street Journal was written that um, in general daily motion bargain over uh, acquisition or partnership with Microsoft and for Microsoft it can be interesting to incorporate or to integrate daily motion in their Bing search kind to try to compete and challenge Google with their YouTube search. That's so, so we wanted to ask if it's uh, happening or not. That was uh, also mentioning just to, to work. I think it's a kind of the same thing as maybe, I don't know if it's um, educated, yes? If you can compare this technology with Shazam that we use, so when you upload their content, it's always uh, checked according to the uh, short part of acoustic sound if it's actually copyrighted or not copyrighted and then like uh, content provider can decide uh, to stop the uploading or to allow it. Uh, it was very interesting case because now since we didn't talk I think about uh, um, video streaming and video <coughs> sharing platform there was the case of the guy who went to space as a space tourism. His name is Chris uh, Hartfield. He actually had uh, 14 million views on YouTube. He was uh, singing in the cosmos. Uh, it was son of David Bowie, Space Oddity. It was recorded in the space. Then he sent the song to the Earth, to Canada, to his partner, and he uploaded on YouTube. And, uh, but before, of course, they had negotiated with Mr. Bowie over the license but uh, this interesting story raises a question first it was very interesting because uh, like I think according to the legislation he would infringe the law if he would uh, float above the country who has this law implement like implemented <laughs> because not all the country can uh, cover the law and um, <clears throat> Also very interesting because even if you sign a deal, for example, if you signed licensing rights, it doesn't permit you to broadcast and distribute. So actually there are three steps. You can uh, buy you can buy license for recording a song, but you, you have to have additional permission for bro broadcast and video distribution. And this has raised a lot of questions because in this case, what we can consider as a private video? For example, I think it was also a very interesting case of thinking I'm happy of the, of, the, of the guys on YouTube, they finally were sued for this. So now, where is this threshold to consider this video to be private? According to the copyright, already a law infringement. Uh, so we have prepared some questions. Uh, so the first question was, what, what was the rationality of the French government to interfere in Yahoo Orange bargaining over daily motion, if actually daily motion wanted to, uh, like, not, to, let's say, enter or uh, appropriate more <coughs> the American market? Uh, what is the future of video sharing platform? And uh, is actually their goal to convert end users to uh, premium subscribers? Uh, where is the threshold of copyright infringement? So does private performance violate the law? And uh, the <clears throat> in the interview to the Independent, uh, you said that Europe should be aware that US is ruling the digital world and Europe should react. So how actually daily motion is going to, I know maybe that's the question that normally all people ask, how are they going to compete with YouTube? And last question that I also found interesting, it was also um, cited by one of uh, your, firm, your firm's chief operate, operating officer. You're talking about new technology, it's P2P, peer-to-peer uh, -peer distribution. And for me, I wanted to ask how it is 
how it's possible technically because what we know from P2P distribution it's normally that we uh, learn from piracies when we uh, like uh, illegally download movies on the tor like bit torrent basis. Um. That's it. Now you have the chance either to answer to their comments uh -huh. or to gather some questions from the audience, so it's as you prefer. Maybe some of the, the questions are, are, are very difficult to answer, so I should just start with them. Uh, the last one about the P2P, well, this is an experimentation we made something in 2008 or 2009. P2P is only a, a, a technology, it's not something bad or something good, it's not illicit or illicit, it's a technology. So, to have a direct access between our servers and the user is one of the possibilities we could develop. Today it's not really, nobody uh, has, is able to provide us the, the, the right answer on this, so um, let's try to, to imagine a, a better P2P in a couple of years, but not before. Um, question about competition, uh, YouTube, um, uh, maybe I didn't give you the, the good comparison with YouTube. What we feel is that YouTube is one of the best search engine and the best video search engine. What we try to develop, what we try to provide, it's a tool for our partners and the advertisers and the end users. Something completely different in terms of approach uh, of, of the business. We will never have um, the army of engineers uh, that Google uh, has. And therefore, we focus on a better quality service. That's the difference between uh, Prêt à porter and haute couture. <laughs> me. Uh, so we never think about YouTube. They, they, they do what they want. We don't care. Uh, it's impossible to compete with them because they have a lot of uh, uh, money, energy. Plus the competition issues uh, in the frame of the EU legislation is a real. For us, it shoots. It's more than six years that uh, we feed uh, the EC with data showing the difference in treatment between the YouTube and daily motion videos. And there is no reaction on the politic point of view because there is kind of fear of uh, the EU officials and saying if we <coughs> if we adopt a position, it's Mm, it's, it's, it's maybe clear that it could, could be uh, obvious that the US government will take another one and let's never forget that the new, uh, remember the Marshall Plan after the World War II, the new Marshall Plan is the, <coughs> the, the, the um, I would say the, the, the rollout of uh, the GAFA services, the Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple services all over the world, especially in Europe. Uh, Europe has lost <coughs> the battle of services. Uh, Europe uh, is focused on uh, protecting its uh, telecom operators. Uh, Europe has lost the device uh, battle, which there is not, not anymore any European uh, uh, device manufacturer. So yes, I'm pretty pessimistic about how European services could uh, compete with, uh, you, with the American one, but uh, there is space for many uh, services and uh, we will never be uh, the number one because we don't have the um, we don't have um, the, 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 the power to, 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 
to be at this number one, but we are pretty confident and we feel that being number two is, uh, is pretty uh, cool. Um, the future of video sharing, just before you, you show us what was the different uh, business models. Video platform, definitely uh, the, the free service uh, paid by the advertisers represent 99% of our business. Sometimes to attract new partners, we add to develop, as I try to explain, some white label services, B2B services, or paying services for when partners don't trust um, advertising to be enough to uh, finance the upload of, uh, of, uh, of their videos. And, uh, and, uh, but uh, in, the, in the past months, and you haven't talked about it, but there have been some rumors about um, some, uh, I would say, industrials uh, identifying Dailymotion as a possible uh, new Netflix. It's true that we have been approached by a lot of, uh, I would say, big companies that wanted to use our technology in order to launch a new Netflix in, in Europe and all over the world, except in the US. And we were very clear, and the manager was very clear, it's not our, our business, it's not our, our expertise. We are able to develop a, a video player, we are able to have the, the, the good bandwidth for the best possible service, but we don't know how to buy catalogs for millions and millions of uh, dollars as uh, Netflix is doing today. So we stopped uh, all uh, the rumors before any uh, negotiations and we feel very sure of our decision. Um, the future of business is um, in the free world, in the uh, free access uh, financed by advertising. Microsoft. Microsoft, Yahoo, every day or most uh, we read uh, interesting articles about company being uh, interesting in uh, acquiring the emotion or having uh, or becoming a, a shareholder. We love it. I mean, that means uh, we are interesting, we are attractive, and uh, it's a good good thing. I mean, for for. Uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, business, but the, the truth is that um, most of the companies are focused on their own business. They don't understand what is really the video platform uh, world and nobody today is able to take the risk as Orange took it a couple of years ago maybe and uh, short-term rules apply uh, only for communication purposes. Uh, we were in 2009 and um, it was difficult for us to um, <coughs> keep our shareholders, who, which were uh, VCs, uh, inside the company. They wanted absolutely to, to exit, which is completely logical for, for VCs and uh, the only company uh, we found at this period uh, in order to invest in the emotion was Orange once again for communication uh, purposes because it was a, there was a new CEO who wanted to show that there was a new strategy, didn't want to produce any more content, wanted to to aggregate content through the emotion. There has been no synergy with Orange, because Orange was, is a good shareholder for the emotion, but uh, we definitely need to invest more in our development. We are going <coughs> to buy more hardware. Last year, 2014, we opened subsidiaries in Singapore, in Japan, in Brazil, but we couldn't because we hadn't the money 
to do it. Uh, uh, we couldn't open uh, subsidiaries in Australia, uh, in Korea, in many countries that uh, we know could be a, a positive move. So we need more money. Uh, more money, that means uh, <laughs> maybe new lives <coughs> and it's a work in progress. We haven't found the right decision, uh, we haven't found the right, uh, um, uh, the right strategy with Orange as well, as uh, Orange is today uh, our only shareholder for historical reasons linked to the Yahoo case. So, Let's stop reading the press. Uh, let's um, try to have the right answer. And once again, it's totally confidential. Uh, we wanted to find new partners in order to not, as some, somebody from Orange said, to open the US market. As, as I told you, the US is already our first market. So it's total nonsense. What we want is more money for this development. We got a lot of proposals, it was 2013, uh, and we got a good one from Yahoo. The truth is that uh, negotiating with Yahoo was very difficult. Yahoo uh, had no idea of how having its own video strategy, and between the letter of intent we signed and the long form agreement that we were negotiating, there was a gap. And we, through, I mean, um, our personal network, I would say, uh, we use it to make the negotiation fail. So everything you have read is only communication, and uh, we have been helped by the French government on this. But it was clear that uh, there was no common strategy with Yahoo. We were a bit vexed that um, after that the minister used it publicly, but it was not something that we planned. But um, uh, there was another consequence which was not positive nor negative is that because of the negotiation of Yahoo, the VC. Uh, uh, and the management sold the, their share to France Telecom Orange in order for Orange to be alone in the final negotiation. So, what was supposed to last only three weeks or one month, now lasts for uh, almost uh, two years. So we have 100 person uh, a subsidiary of Orange. We meet uh, Orange people three years, uh, three, three three times a year during our uh, shareholder meetings. It's a good shareholder because we are totally free and autonomous. But the real question, and you raise it, is what is our future? Do we need to an IPO to become totally independent? Do we have to convince our own to invest more than the, 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 the acquisition of the share that they have done? It's an open question and I don't have the answer. Um, we have time just for a wave of questions. If somebody has a question, can raise it now. Um, Ana Federico. Okay, and so and maybe just to come back to the question already raised in the discussion about the net neutrality. Yes, as you said that your main market is US with almost forty five percent of the users and having such a big enemy score able to pay for pay for play scheme, do you see it as a threat for me to somehow enter the debate? Well Daily Motion, this is something that uh, I didn't uh, mention, was uh, at the origin of the first time in the world that we talk about net neutrality. It was in 2007. We were negotiating bandwidth with a telecom operator. We were not happy with the tariff he wanted us to pay. So we stopped the negotiation. His reaction was to um, block the, his subscriber. They couldn't watch a video on the emotion. What we did, we put a pop-up on their screen, 
because it was easy for them to in the identify them when they tried to access the site, saying, hey, it's not our fault, you can't watch our videos. It's your um, ISP's fault, so you should contact it. One after, you know, the, the call service of the ISP exploded. They were not able to answer the question. And two hours after, the service was again available on delivery. Because of this, we decided to launch a trade association in France, and it exists only in France. It's called uh, Association des Services Internet Communautaires with Google, Facebook, uh, Yahoo, and European actors as well. And our goal was to defend, protect net neutrality. But what we understood when we launched this trade association, when we talked uh, at the European level with different regulators, is that everybody has a different uh, I would say translation, a different definition of net neutrality. Net neutrality for a service like us is only the ability of choose totally independently the origin of the bandwidth through a telecom operator, through a content delivery network, CDN, Akamai, for instance through a transit operator. We want to act like a broker to buy the bandwidth at the best level of quality and at the best price. That's net neutrality. For a blogger or blogger, net neutrality is the, the ability of say whatever they want on the internet without being blocked by um, Tunisia or Saudi Arabia or Ireland. <coughs> Uh, for freedom of speech, uh, it's, it's a different uh, definition. So for a service uh, provider like, uh, 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 like us, it's a, it's a different uh, definition. What we feel is that, uh, and the emotion is a, a subsidiary of a telecom operator, but I'm very happy to say it uh, even when they are uh, when they attend the meeting, uh, I, I, I talk about net neutrality. Is when telecom operators say that ser internet services should contribute more in the financing of the networks. That's a question of the net neutrality and maybe two different levels of services. When uh, uh, you don't pay the telecom operator, you will have a, a lower quality of service. Um, our answer, and even in the U.S., it's the, 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 what we, we say to the, to the FCC, for instance, is that the, the answer is, is very, uh, for us, obvious. It's uh, why people subscribe to uh, Internet access providers. They subscribe for the services, not for sending only emails, but the, the, they want to send emails, they want to access Google, they want to watch video on the emotion. So we should get a part of the subscription fees that each citizen pays to uh, internet uh, access providers. Of course, this idea is not really welcome, but uh, it blocks any other discussion on it, because really we have the good uh, I would say, uh, arguments to oppose to the telecom operators. Um, we're going to gather the rest of the questions so that we have a final answer. So, Anne? Okay. Um, so, I have this question regarding, uh, you talked about uh, the uh, uh, content creators and advertisers. So, I was hoping um, if you could emphasize a bit about the pricing strategy that mm -hmm. is used by Daily Motion uh, with these two and the whole chain. Uh, and secondly, um, uh, you talked about the various sorts of advertising, uh, the in-stream, the display, and the various uh, advertising that is used. What is your criteria for managing all these ads and how to prevent more ad clutter? Um, you know, because when you're actually viewing a video, that's a sort of... Uh, and what uh, criteria do you have that uh, is the ad related to the video itself? in some way or the other, or 
if you could emphasize yeah. a bit about that. I had a prior background in advertising, so I was specifically interested in this part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're going to gather the questions. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, mine is about creative Creative Commons licenses, and I was wondering if uh, Daily Motion is already including them, plans to, if there is discussion about it, or if at the moment it's out of your scope. So, uh, um, to finish, uh, I would like to ask you, uh, the girls raised the question about the future of Daily Motion, but what do you think is the future of the industry? Because um, <laughs> prior to the presentation, we were just uh, looking at the whole video hosting idea of services, <coughs> it's really developed and it's not what it, it was uh, from the beginning so what is the future of the whole industry because many players are entering and as well many players are exiting so is it a matter where is the room for innovation in this uh, market <coughs> is it about adapting or about innovating and finally what what is what comes next from the content point of view uh, is it the web television, webcast, the video on demand that it's not really popular, or what's come? Thank you. So, um, different questions, different answers. On the um, Creative Commons, well, the emotion is built on open source. So, it's really the community of developers help us to, um, to, uh, to uh, deploy and uh, to enhance the quality of the site. Mm, on the technology, on the content, Creative Commons are not so common as we don't ask any rights on the video uploaded. They are uploaded, but they remain, the, pro, the, 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 the they belong to the, the people who uploaded them. So we don't need any license about them. On advertising, uh, advertiser through advertising exchange, through ADEX services, or directly, they choose channels, <coughs> channels, uh, sematics. They want to invest in an advertising campaign, for instance, uh, when you sell, uh, when you are good, you sell tires, you want to target men, and you want to target the um, uh, car thematic. So you say, I want 10 million of page views through uh, the channel cards. But <coughs> when you have only displays, that means the banners uh, around the video, I would say in European countries, the cost for the advertiser will be from two euros to five euros for 1,000 views. But for the advertiser, it's really more interesting to have campaigns running as in-stream campaigns inside the video, as pre-roll, mid-roll in the middle, or post-roll. But this campaign are so <coughs> Uh, uh, more expensive. In Europe, I would say that they are 10 to 25 euros each 1,000 views. An advertiser never targets one video on one content owner. If he wants to do so, we try together to build some branded content for the brand for the advertiser. But an advertiser can't say, uh, I want my videos, to, my advertising videos, to run around inside the Rihanna videos. It's not possible. Because the, the owner of the rights of uh, Rihanna will ask for a direct content, contact with, with him. Is it, is it about uh, the, um, which, which is something really uh, that I love in our industry, it's that's a pretty new industry and we know nothing about the future. We know nothing and we don't care because <coughs> our ability is to react promptly, to be able to fail, to never fear the, any failure and to be really 
able to have the next idea, the next uh, lousy idea, or the next great idea, and to be uh, confident in the fact that uh, you are doing the best to provide the best possible service. So what should be our future? What we feel is that um, we, we won't take, we won't replace television. We feel that uh, uh, we can uh, easily work with television, what we do today. Um, new generation uh, use less, watch less TVs than, than before. So the risk is more on, on TV side. Um, what we need definitely is more uh, exclusive content and it's very difficult to finance uh, exclusive content so therefore for instance in Paris we opened one less than one year ago a specific studio in order to host uh, young and internet creators and we help them to produce their, their own content it's free and the counterpart is uh, some win exclusivity, exclusivity windows so it's what we try to do but maybe tomorrow connected TVs will become um, more and more used in the, by the public and then we will have to uh, uh, insist, uh, enhance our uh, uh, connected TV strategy and provide the same content that you can find on TV but in a better quality and or with interactive tools, we don't know. Thank you very much. You're welcome.